Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Cristana and I am the owner and creator of Bella Renovare. And I wanted to do a video on like a paint technique finish. So I've kind of stumbled across this finish that I really, really like. It's not something that I created. Um, many people have done it before me, but I wanted to show you how I do it. So I did it on this piece back here. And so we're gonna do it very similar almost the same exact piece on this one, except we're not gonna use any kind of pink hues. So I like to call this one back here, I didn't make a name up really. Um, this one, it looks kind of like fire. So it's called, so tech, the technical word for a finish like this is called mottled. Um, so M-O-T-T-L-E-D. And what that is, is if you guys have ever seen, there's cats, like calico cats, they call them mottled cats or, um, there's another cat and I can't think of it right now, but like it's sometimes skin, baby skin's blotchy. I have a part on my arm that's mottled. Um, so it's almost a blotchy finish. It, but I mean, that sounds bad because blotchy is not always a good thing, but it's more, so if you can see, we've got the different colors throughout. So on this piece, what I did is I used Honky Tonk Red by Dixie Bell. And then I also used Florida Orange by Dixie Bell. And then I used Colonel Mustard by Dixie Belle. So you can see all three of those colors throughout this piece. And so that's why I like to say it's a fire blend. So the front here is done. And so what I'm going to do is show you guys how to do the sides. Um, this part I didn't paint because it actually has a cushion on it. And I'm very frugal. I don't want to waste paint. So I did, I did paint the parts that you would see. But right here... Um, the person before me had painted it white, but I'm not going to waste paint on that because it's going to be covered by a cushion anyways. So what we're going to do is I'm going to flip it to the side and show you how to start this finish. I would say this finish is probably, um, maybe like a beginner to intermediate. It's, it's not that a beginner can't do it. I, I absolutely think that a beginner can do it. You just need to take your time. So make sure that if you don't know for sure what, um, what I'm saying or you don't get it, then you need to watch it over and over again because sometimes it can be a little bit tricky. And after a while, once we've been painting for a while, we forget that sometimes things come a little bit easier um, than when we're just starting. So just don't get discouraged because again, like I said, once you've been doing it for a long time, it's just kind of second nature. So this is what we're going for, this finish right here. I had already finished this front. I did new hardware on here. So we're going to flip it to the side. I'm going to show you the first step of this process and then possibly the second step of this process on one side. And then I will show you the last step of the process on the other side since it's already painted and dried. So, um, and then it'll give you an idea of how to do this finish, this mottled blotchy finish. And you can do this with any color. I suggest that you do it with like colors. So um, kind of stay with the color wheel. You see how these are all warm colors. So if you're going to do it, you could do like greens and blues together and purples and pinks. And like this piece back here, I put peony, which is um, peony, peony from Dixie Belle, which went really well with these colors. So just keep that in mind. I don't want to put green in here. Um, you know, like a bright green because it may muddy up my colors. I don't know. I mean, you could try it. I, I Try it and see what happens. You may surprise yourself, but that's generally to make it easier on myself and on the finish. And so I'm not like ripping my hair out. I try to stay with light color families. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this. So I'm going to flip this to the side and we're going to start this. All right. So the first step of this, the person before me had painted this white. It's a chalk type paint. What I did is I cleaned this piece really well and I didn't sand it because you don't need to sand with Dixie Belle. Um, if you can see, I kind of went over this a little bit with the red that I was using before. So we are not using water in this blending technique, okay? There's no water to be used. If you want to try to use water and you think it's better, go ahead, but I'm going to show you how to do it without water. First, what I like to do is I like to shake my paint and I like to get it in the lid, okay? Because I like to use the lid, the paint from the lid, because it thickens up a little bit more than if it's in the jar. Plus, it's not always recommended to stick your brush in the jar I break a lot of rules. So we are going to open this up now that I've put this here and I'm actually going to just work out of the lids and I'm going to set these aside. So we're going to do that with each one of these. So it, it mixes your paint up as well as puts that paint on this part. 
because when you're doing layering, you kind of want the paint to be a little bit thicker. And this will allow it to get a little bit thicker. So you see I've got all my paint brushes down, or my paint lids right here. Honky Tonk Red, Florida Orange, Colonel Mustard. And I'm gonna have a link in the description of all the products that I'm using. So the next thing is to get a different brush with each color. So I use Dixie Belle synthetic brushes. We've got the mini angled, and then here's a mini, which is not angled. It doesn't matter what brush you use. I just was grabbing whatever was clean. So oval medium. So I also like to have a neutral synthetic brush set aside that doesn't go with any color. And I really like to smooth everything out in the end. And I'll show you that with the premium Dixie Belle chip brush. I like to use a natural bristle brush to kind of bring everything together. So um, if you're gonna do five colors, you're gonna need five different paint brushes. If you're only gonna do two colors, you only need two. So you get the drift. So what we're gonna do first is you're just gonna randomly pick an area. So this is the very first step. You trust this process, guys. So here is the first step. And since there's already red up here, I'm just gonna go ahead and do red. What we're doing right now is we're laying down a base coat because when you blend I have found over the years of doing this, I used to do it where I would just do one coat and blend, but I have found that when you do a base coat, it's less likely to pull the paint from the bottom layers and you're not having to go through and touch up little spots where your paint has pulled away. So if you've ever done blending, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, when you do it, you may know. So you can't even see that. There we go. Sorry. Okay. So we're just gonna randomly put this red anywhere. I don't, there's no rhyme or reason. Um, I try not to do too much of one color in a place. I try to do it, less is more in this so that you can kind of look back and see where you want the color. So red is a very strong color. It is, this honky tonk red is a little bit darker than the orange and the yellow that we're using. And so if I use too much, then it will overpower this piece and I don't want that. So let's just do like a little spot right here, okay? So now we're gonna set that down and we're gonna go to our Florida orange. The Florida orange, I'm just gonna kind of, and it's okay if you overlap these. So these are all going to blend together anyways. So you want to actually kind of go right up against that one. And as you can see, there's still that black paint from the other finish before. So we're gonna do this first coat and then we're gonna do a second coat, and I'll show you that, um, just so that we have nice, even coverage. Because most of Dixie Belle's colors have really great coverage, but some of the lighter colors, you need a couple coats. So even though this is white, there's black, and they did like black whatever underneath there, so. And I'm actually gonna throw a piece of orange right here. Just throw it in there, okay? And then, let's see. Let's do some orange right here. And then I'm gonna switch over to kernel mustard. So we're gonna do kernel mustard and we're gonna go over here. Like I said, just there's no rhyme or reason and this is totally fine. What is happening right here with them kind of muddying together. And this is why I say you need to have light colors because when they do muddy together, it doesn't look awful. <laughs> it doesn't look like baby poop. So, so we're gonna do the yellow, we'll do some I'll we'll just do this whole part right here, yellow. That's fine. Because once it mixes together, it's all going to kind of look the same. So what we're gonna do is, this is the first step, okay? Random, let's put a little bit of yellow up here. Random colors, okay? What we're gonna do is we're going to let this dry and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do another coat over top of this one just red, orange, yellow in the same exact areas, not in, not in different spots, we're gonna do in the same areas, okay? So we'll be back after we do our second coat. So we are back, I have my second coat of the paint on, and I'm gonna show you a little trick. So instead of washing my paint in between when these, when we do these kind of techniques, I put a sandwich, put them in a sandwich bag and I actually take a rubber band and rubber band around this so that it kind of closes off so there's no air that gets in there. And then I have a bag for each brush. And so now I can pull these brushes out and we can start blending. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna blend this 
first before we go on to the modeling. Modeling. Okay, so we've got our honky tonk red, which again, remember, I'm going to use the caps. And so we're going to open up our kernel mustard and our Florida orange. And we are going to start blending these. So we're not using water to blend these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush in my honky tonk red. And I'm just going to re-wet the surface so that way we can put them together. So I'm gonna go over where all of my Honky Tonk Red is, re-wet that surface. And then let's see, we're going to go find our Florida Orange. Same thing, we're gonna wet the surface. Remember we put a little bit of our Florida orange up in this part. And now we're gonna take our kernel mustard. So now that we have wet paint, in these areas, we can start doing our blend, okay? So first we're gonna start with the Honky Tonk Red, and I'm just gonna kind of go into the orange right here. Up here, in here, okay? And then we're gonna take our orange and go into the Honky Tonk Red. Now, we're gonna take our neutral brush. This is our neutral brush, it's damp. So you're gonna want it damp. And we're going to go horizontal, and we're gonna go vertical. So you can go like this. It doesn't matter because this kinda, of, and I'm gonna wipe it off. I've got, I have my drop cloth here, or you can use this, or paper towels. And it doesn't matter if it gets a little bit muddied because after this step, we're going, I'm going to show you how to do the last step, which is the mottled. So that's what I'm going to do for this entire thing. So again, we're just going to, so we've got our kernel mustard now. I just kind of work in sections. So we've got our kernel mustard and we're going to go up into the kernel mustard. Okay, and there's red and orange over here. So we can kind of put a little bit of red down here into the yellow. Sorry, my geriatric dog is walking around. You can hear him. So now that we've done that, again, we're gonna take our neutral brush and we're going to just kind of go vertical, wipe it off while we're doing it, horizontal. And basically what we're trying to do at this point is get these colors, so we're going sideways, we're trying to get these colors to have um, a soft blend, so no hard lines at this point is what we're looking for. And if we, you know, some of that yellow has gone away, I'm gonna put a little bit more of that yellow in there, take our neutral brush and kind of just put it in there. So as you can see, we're starting to soften up all these areas. So I'm gonna just continue to do the rest. Also, here's another tip. I really like Dixie Bell's premium chip brushes. Um, it's a natural bristle brush, and you can also use this to kind of smooth out everything and soften it. Uh, natural bristle brushes are really nice for that. They're very soft. So if you feel like you need to soften it a little bit more, that's another tip which I'm showing you. So you can do that as well. We will be using these for the next step. So let's finish blending this whole thing. So 
So we have blended this part right here, okay? That was the second part of this process. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this piece over because I did the same thing on the other side, it's just dry. And I'm gonna show you how to do the third and final step in this process. Okay, so here is the other side and I'm gonna show you the very final part of this. It's called mottled, okay? Um, I keep saying it, <laughs> but that's what it's called. So we have our honky tonk red, our Florida orange. Again, we're going to shake it. So I closed everything up so we could move it. Because with my look, things will fall. So let's set this brush down. We're gonna shake this up. I'm actually gonna try to push this back. So we can pull this forward. Okay, so all of this really is, is a bunch of swirling and dabbing and getting things to kind of just marry together. So again, we have our brushes, the same brushes I've been using for each color. We've got our neutral brush that I also have a paper towel right here. So it's okay that, it, you know, you could go clean it if you want to, but again, these colors are all gonna come together. And then here's our Dixie Belle brush. Um, our bell, our Dix, they're all Dixie Bell brushes, but this one is the premium chip brush. So I'm just gonna choose an area. So I kind of want a little bit of orange right here. So I'm going to just dab some orange, dab it right here in this area, dab a little bit of yellow onto there. And then I'm gonna take my neutral brush, just kind of swirl it around. Okay, we're gonna take our chip brush, swirl it around, dab it, and then I'm going to take the red, and this is going to help blend it better. So we're gonna do this, and you see how we start getting like little spots. Basically, it's like little splotches all over. And this is the same process that we wanna do. So let's see, I want, we could do a big one. So we want yellow right here. And then let's add a little orange. Let's mix them together. Do this little number. And because there's red around it, we're going to use the red. And we're going to just kind of, almost like a, take it and go like this. Side by side. And if you feel like it's too rough, then you can take the red and kind of just go down into it. And after a while, so sometimes on the flatter pieces, it's gonna take a little bit. Um, but if you keep on doing this process over this entire piece, it's gonna have a really cool effect to it. The front was um, there was lines that stopped it and things like that. So the sides will be a little bit trickier or at least they'll look kind of tricky at first because you're like, okay, this is flat as opposed to the front where there's like lines that stop it. So just keep on doing this in different areas and you'll get that perfect effect. So I'm gonna do the same thing and just pick different places. And um, these colors work really well together, so it doesn't matter. So if I want to do red and yellow together or red and orange together, you don't have to do the same colors together each time. I just kind of want to figure out where I want them. So let's see, we'll do, we'll do yellow and orange right here because there's orange up in those areas. And you can go like this to blend them together. And it's always nice to use that other color to kind of dab it, because that's what we want. We want it to be modeled, but we also want it to blend together. So that's what these premium chip brushes are really good about, because they're not expensive and you don't have to worry about, you know, I mean, they're reusable and I rewash them, but if for some reason you mess up the bristles, you're not so concerned. So do you see how that works? And then if you feel like, okay, this is kind of messing up my red, you can just go in with your red over here, no other colors, and just kind of start blending. So do you see how we're starting to see right here 
the uh, mottling effect. And so we're gonna do, I'm gonna do some orange right here, I think. And we're just gonna go in like that with it. And then of course we want to put a little bit of red to blend it. And that's the whole purpose of this effect is a blotchy look, okay? So that's what we're going for. So I'm gonna to continue to do the rest of the piece. You can go around in circles. see right here there's orange so I'm going to try to put that orange there because I feel like that is going to give it a better blend that's going to blend it better so whatever color is on the side of what you're wanting to blend better try to use that color and I just want to put a little bit of yellow up here just like its own little lighting And there you go. So we're starting to see it. So I'm going to finish the rest of the piece and that's it guys. It's pretty simple. It is a, it's a step, but the process, but it's simple. Now that we're done, you will want to go over your piece with whatever sealer that you like. If you're using Dixie Belle paint, you don't have to seal the piece. It will cure in 30 days. If you're using a different paint line, I can't speak to how well this technique will work, but if it does, use whatever you like to seal that piece. Um, this is our final product right here. Oops. So there's the front of it. And then, actually, let's try to go over to the side, sorry. So there's the side of it. And so, excuse my messy house, but that's real life. I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who has supported me the last almost four years of this journey that I've been on and um, this business. So this, I just wanted to do this tutorial as a way to give back, to just say thank you. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for following me. Anyone who orders from my affiliate links, thank you so much. Um, I, you know, this business, we don't make millions of dollars. So every little bit helps. So, um, and supporting my family and this art. And so I can keep bringing you stuff. So again, I just want to say thank you so much. And I really hope that this helps. I would love if you guys showed me your creations as well as um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna try to be more active on here. And then, sorry, Zeppelin, say, say hi Zeppelin. This is my 14 year old dog if you don't know him. Um, if you follow me at all, you know that my life is chaotic. So if you're new to this and you're watching this YouTube video and this bothers you, well then that's, this is my life, chaos. So anyways, um, I just wanna say thank you. Make sure that you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go follow me over on Facebook, Instagram. I've got a blog, bellarenovare.com. I try to blog on a lot of different things. I feel like it's probably friendly for all 
um, levels of, you know, whether you are beginning or you're intermediate or maybe you forget or maybe you just need to ask a question. And then as I'm always here, so you can always shoot me a message as well. So again, I'm on all platforms. And if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know. Again, thank you guys so, so much. And this is my YouTube channel. And my name is Kristana, owner creator of Bella Renovari. So show me your guys' projects because I can't wait to see them. Have an awesome time painting. <laughs>